Welcome back to the JJK Chronicles of Jiu-Jitsu Kaizen Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Ronnie. And I'm one of your hosts, Chad Lee. Chad, how the hell are you? I am doing fantastic. Coming off of, I believe it's your ninth wedding this year. Um, and at this point, you were kind of telling me about it. It didn't even seem like anything fun happened. Uh, I mean, there are some fun things. It's a long process, Ronnie. Whenever, you, whenever you're in a wedding, right. I know you'll be in one soon. Haven't had the honor. You'll be in mine whenever I get married. You might oh, even boy. be standing right next to me when might I get be married. Wait, might be waiting for a while, though. But uh, there's, a, here's, there's a whole process, okay? Right. Walk me through the process. I'll walk you through it. There's a rehearsal that you got to go to the night before. Which, come on, how hard can it be? That's pretty pretty difficult. All right, well, here, I'll just let you explain it. So basically in the rehearsal, you rehearse what you're going to do in the ceremony. So right. So they tell you who you're going to walk with. They line you up. Hey, are we performing the theater play Wicked, or are we walking into locations? We are walking into locations, but you got to know where you're going, okay? okay? There's a lot of old people in the wedding as well. There's grandmas, grandpas. They don't remember very well. So you walk through all of that, then you go to a dinner afterwards, you drink at the dinner, you get drunk, you go to sleep, you gotta wake up bright and early, okay? You got a whole day ahead of you. Too much already going on. I go through the whole day waiting. Sounds like it's taking up a weekend. Keep going. (laughs) Waiting, taking pictures, eating, waiting, some more waiting, uh, a little bit more waiting after Did you wait a little bit after that? Yes. Okay. And then you finally wait one last time, and it's finally ceremony time. I'm getting mad. You go through the ceremony. Luckily, the ceremony, really quick. Mm -hmm. Short, sweet, beautiful wedding, beautiful kiss. Beautiful wedding. Uh, Made me a little little jealous. I, listen, you know, guys can be made in all shapes and sizes, and that's fine. One of the funniest things I ever heard was there's this dude who works at our, the same building we do, and I walked by and someone went, he asked that guy, oh, how was the wedding? Now, I haven't been to a whole lot of weddings, but if I did, I would my go-tos would be like, oh, it was fun, it was cool, or like, it was nice. Maybe I'd say it was nice. This guy, his eyes got really big, and he just went, oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't a wrong answer, but it still made me laugh. Well, this wedding was beautiful, okay? Gorgeous weather, let me tell you. 70 oh, degrees. Nice weekend. Slightly bree- breezy, sunny, beautiful uh, view. I mean, just a gorgeous view. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. And, and then you go through that. Afterwards, you have fun. You get to drink, let loose. That's the best part is right after the ceremony. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about how your shirt being tucked in. Yeah. How your suspenders look. So you don't have to rehearse for that part. You don't have to rehearse for it. You walk out, you drink some booze, you have fun with your buddies, you get rejected by a couple women, and then that's the end of the night. End of the night. And another night well lived. Um, Did sound pretty boring. It sounds like I was right. Didn't have much of a story to tell, it didn't seem like. Not really. I mean, besides just getting, you know, a little tipsy Mm -hmm. and getting rejected, I mean, that's about all that happened with me. Well, I'm glad you uh, had fun, question mark. Do you have fun? fun. Okay, great. Wish women liked me more. Yeah, hey, me too. That's why. But if you could start being more likable, maybe I could game plan for being by your side that that faithful day uh, coming up here in the next probably 40 years, I would say. I would put it in that time yeah, range. Yeah, that's playing it safe. A uh, little update, because why the heck would we talk about the show we're covering? The Lizard is no longer here. You live in an expansive penthouse. We only use the studio for recording, so therefore... Uh, We, last time we left off, we just walked away, closed him in here, and he's no longer on the Xbox. So, I'm on high alert. He could be anywhere. But Cat and Dick is on the loose, so heads up. You want to know, it's, you know, well, should I tell another story or should we get in the episode? Yeah, whatever, you know. Let's go ahead and, I mean, you haven't done anything, or you've been doing this wedding all weekend, so we're only recording one episode today. We're getting it out. Who knows how this is going to mess up our schedule. It's going to throw the entire train off. So why don't we just keep messing things up? We'll keep messing it up. I was going to tell you how I came up with Cap and Dick. So if you're an animal lover, you might not like this one. But back spring break, my sophomore year of high school, I was 15, couldn't drive yet. 
has nothing to do with the story, but okay. we uh, went to spring break, you know. Said that already. By a mommy. One of the mommies drove us. Right. And fun time. We, me and the boys, uh, Tommy Boy was there. Mm-hmm. That's the only one I think that, that are. Uh, that you've mentioned before. On that the... I've mentioned, yeah. Tommy Boy was there. Anyways, we caught a lizard. Big guy. Cool guy. Named him Captain Dick. Mm-hmm. And actually, the guy that is our artist that did our cover art. So our Captain Dick's actually Captain Dick the second slash junior. Yes, he's a junior. Okay. The guy that did our cover art, he is very artistic craftsman. Yeah. He's and winning in many aspects of life. It's really frustrating. <laughs> Washboard abs. God. I mean, he is so hot. He uh, at least crea- that's, what, that's what people tell me. We were on the 10th floor, and he had created a parachute device. Okay. Out of what I want to say, paper. It was like a paper mache. Mm-hmm. We had no idea if this was going to work or not. Right. We, uh, <laughs> young young men experimenting, you know. It's... We put Cap and Dick in this uh, harness. In this harness. Okay. We parachuted him down to the pool. It was like 10 stories up. We parachuted him all the way down, had a guy down below at the pool catch the parachute. Captain Dick stayed put the entire time. No way. He landed a 10 story parachute drop. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you, good. Coolest Lord. coolest dude ever and we officially he was I think his name was Dick at the time. We yeah. were like, "Oh, that guy's Captain, captain Dick. Dick." Yeah. Cuz once you go on a voyage like that, you become yeah. a captain. Oh yeah. And wow. I, I mean, as you know, a story like that, we slayed so much pussy Oh that, my god, that 15. Yeah, yeah, you guys were slaying it. Uh you know, in the beginning when you said that you were on spring break like three times and you updated me on your driving capabilities, I wasn't sure how that story was going to end up. I'm really glad you told it. So thanks. So what do you say we talk about an episode? Uh, I guess we have to Are take... we still on Attack on Titan? Uh, we're not. We're covering um, Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen. For some Kaisen. reason it took uh, 11 episodes for people to tell us we've been saying it wrong. That's not our fault. You know what? We've been getting a lot of flack this week. I'd like to just first. I want you to speak on it. How you feel? Yeah. I, I, I'm done. I, I get it. June Pie. I was stupid for saying it. It's June P. We've had. We've learned from multiple people now what no, it actually is. No, it's not June P. I mean, he does P. It's June Pay. It's June Pay. June which, Pay. Which, uh, just come on. I mean, yeah. It's just like let's uh, let's uh, spell out yeah. Sin Pie and June Pie the same, but let's call one well, June Pay. One's an A, one's an E. It's just no. I'm not buying it. Uh, listen, I'm with you. The thing that I'm mad about June Pay is I steered away from it. I called him Yoshino. I think I called him June Pie one time, and of course, just like everything bad in my life, I got sucked down the rabbit hole with you. And all of a sudden, it's like when Ronnie says June Pie and Chad says no. I was saying other names wrong, so give me a break, okay. all right? We'll, we'll change his name because he's going to be around for a long time. Yeah, he's going to be, yeah. It's good that they waited three episodes to tell us this so we could get it right um, because he's going to be here for a while. And then it's also uh, Mahito. Mahito, yeah. I feel like I yeah. occasionally say that one right. Well, you said Mojito a ton in one of the last episodes, but then what's funny is at one point, you tried to put some very like uh, a Japanese flair on it. You said it perfectly when I was editing last episode. So that's what it, I just need to use my Japanese flair. Mm-hmm. I haven't been using it that often. Yeah, last episode we mispronounced about nine hundred and thirty-seven different, or well, it wasn't different names. It was just the same name over and over again, and then you nailed that one. So it's Mahito, right? I think so. And you know they're probably going to correct us again. Itadori. and Jujutsu. Jujutsu, which come on, if they're... it's it's hard to say. It's like kind of my tongue does a little hesitation move. Is it Jujutsu or Jujutsu? I don't know, because guess what? What you just said sounded the same exact thing to me. But what what can you really? Ex- it's Ronnie and Chad. What do you people expect? So it's uh, season one, episode eleven. Narrow minded. I am so excited to cover this episode. I told you this earlier in the week. I might be more hyped to do this one than I have any uh, of them. Any of them. Okay. So Don't we start why. off where we left off. Mahito is changing their foot back after going 17% reindeer last episode. Nanami takes off the tie. His cursed energy starts to increase. He's going into overtime. <sighs> Mahito looks slightly hey, worried. Hey. Huh? When a business... <laughs> a business. 
<laughs> when a businessman goes into overtime. Well, salary man, ex salary man. Ex salary. Okay, you're right. He's an ex salary man. When you have to put an ex salary man into overtime, it's game on. Amen. Mahito looks slightly worried as he realizes that this is a classic time based pact. Hate those kind of pacts. Yeah, basic. He's been limiting his own cursed energy this whole time. And after being concerned, since Mahito is a crazy person or curse or crazy cursed person, I don't know what to call him, but one thing's for sure, he definitely is crazy. He's an individual. Because of this, they seem to think this whole situation is going to be a lot more fun. I like this guy. He just wants to have fun. It's always, he's just there to have fun. And so in case you forgot, this is the point in the episode where Nanami is going to once again explain his very complicated curse technique. Um, no worries, though. I pretty, I'm going to be honest, I pretty much held your hand a couple episodes back, nailed the explanation pretty perfectly, if I do say mm-hmm. so myself. So we don't have to spend much time here. No, we got it. So instead of not spending much time here, I decided to tell you how well I did to kind of have my moment. Okay. Um, could you say that I did it pretty good? When yeah, I did it. I thought you did. Thank you. Basically, he can designate any item or creature, split a section into 10, as long as he hits, hits that magic 7 to 3 ratio, he's going to do some damage. Which, do you think that's a little too much? Like, come on, bro, like, make it simpler? Or do you think, okay, that's I mean, it's cool. uh, it's kind of like, I guess it's kind of cool, but it, it is pretty, uh, when you start talking about 7 to 3 ratios and you're splitting things into 10 equal parts, it's kind of like, all right, can you just use yeah. the thing? And you know what him? this guy reminds me of? Hmm. An ex-salary man. Yeah, it's true. Mahito is now getting turned on due to techniques being revealed. But weren't we all? Yeah, Nanami is a uh, specimen. Say it, yeah. They start fighting again while Nanami considers his options as to how he could kill Mahito. He can, one, continue damaging him until he runs out of cursed energy... Now, this one, to me, seems like it's going to take a long time. Uh, I mean, sure, he is getting paid overtime right now, but you can't stay on the clock forever. Eventually, HR is going to step in and kind of tell you to get off the books. You can't be a Larry. The second option is to reduce him to smithereens with a single blow. And I'm not thinking that one's going to work either. But if that's the two options, I mean, yeah, I say we go with that one. So Nanami punches a wall while using his ratio technique collapse. That's what he said. Mahito realizes that realizes that this is an expanded technique that imbues the destroyed target with cursed energy. So therefore, Nanami punched the wall, which sent a bunch of debris all over the place that is now packed full of its own cursed energy. You following me over there? I'm following you. It's so this not only is it just a regular collapsion, because mm-hmm. there is a collapsion. It's a collapsion of cursed energy. Yes, it, it, the rocks. If you were paying attention to that, the debris yep. glowed blue with some cursed energy. So I don't know what that means. I don't know. It if when seems a rock like it maybe it makes you, them heavier. Or maybe something? I'll roll with that. So due to the nature of this attack, though, since now all these rocks are flying all over the place, it also puts Nanami in danger. After analyzing the situation, Mahito decides that it might be a good idea to dodge. That's my favorite character. He's very smart. But before he can do just that, God, You know what he needs to be like? Huh? He, He needs to learn from Piccolo. Or Piccolo needs to learn from him. Tell Gohan to dodge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Dragon Ball Z reference. It is. Gohan never dodges. I'm all over it. So Nanami uses his curse or his technique and cuts off Mahito's leg. And then for some reason, after getting this extreme upper hand, immediately says he will now be retreating. And that Mahito should get that leg healed quickly. What's going on? Well, you're about to find out in .7 seconds. He goes on to say that if they both manage to survive, they should meet again. And right before going into the opening credits, a large piece of cursed wall topples over and lands on Mahito. There it is. (laughs) So, how am I getting ready to understand? I think he he was just getting ready for that to fall on top of him, and he's like, if you survive this, I guess I'll fight you for another day. And he dipped out. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I would too. That kind of disappoints me from Nanami. I don't know, man. That's I think he was injured. That's kind of why he he was yeah he was weak. But like, there's no leg. You gotta 
if all you got to do is split something into 10 and hit that 7 to 3 ratio, you got to try a little bit harder instead of, I mean, Mahito can turn into uh, a horse for crying out loud. I think he knew he was outmatched. Let's be, let's be honest. Nanami is an ex-salary man. He's... I think Nanami would be pissed that you said that personally. Well, I remember when you used to be a Mahito stan. Kind of seems like you we'll were say just, the name right. Kind of seems like you were just simping to the Discord because they liked him. So you're like, oh, I'll just simp to him and say that I uh, like him too. I didn't. If you remember from episode one, I called this guy out. So you can take what you just said out of your mouth and shove it up your butthole. Mr. Panda Man. Where's where's Panda? Hey, where's Panda? Not doing anything cool. He's helping Nobara get better at stuff. And you know what else he's doing? We go straight into the OP. Panda and the OP. He's jumping over buildings. Well, Sanonami, the master of class, wins round one. And this guy is such the master of class that he teaches the master class on how to be the master of class. I don't get that. Get it? Because like it, the master class is the class in which you become a master, but his class is, is on the how master. to be the master of class. He's a classy guy. Okay. Yeah. That was something sick I put into my notes. I hope you liked it. Yeah, it's pretty weak. We come back out of the OP. Panda. To a beautiful sunset. And... Uh, Junpei and Itadori are hanging out down by the river. They feel a little earthquake. We are guessing intensity two is what they say. Junpei just knows his earthquake intensity. I guess so. He's like, oh, intensity two. I could feel it. Um, Itadori is on the phone holding one of those little bitch curses. That's what I'm going to start calling the curses that don't even get on the scale. They're just little bitches. I feel like I could take one of them out. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think that's the whole point is like, they're just little bitches. Assistant to the manager is not answering, which keeps his grand total of being able to do anything right at zero. This guy just makes every episode that passes by with this guy in it makes me hate him Mm -hmm. even more. He sucks. Well, you see a glimpse as to why he's not answering the phone. It's because he can't catch... One of the little bitches, even with oh a net. God. You were just saying how you think you could take one out. He's got a net, can't even catch it. How is this douche? How is he a part of this whole jujutsu society? Mm-hmm. My note says, how is this guy even employed? Yeah. I mean, Pro- just because he can see curses, is I've that I've got the a only prediction. Reason? I got a prediction. Ooh. And remember, he's cheating by seeing the curses. He's got the glasses. We've decided that already, remember? My prediction is we will learn that this guy is related to the head of the high school. And I still don't wow. know his name because we rarely see that guy. But, but, but wait, how does he put up a veil, though? Didn't he put up a veil in like the fifth episode or something? Mm, yeah, he did. Like that third episode. Of the... Dude, how can he not catch one of these bitch curses if he can put up a veil? That's really true. If he put up an what? entire veil. Mm. This guy sucks. I think it was an optical illusion. He had a projector, projector system. Junpei is once again looking at Itadori's buttons on his uniform. We flash back to a time when Mahito was telling him that if he meets a student with said button, he should be friendly to them because they are sorcerers. Somehow, Mahito is managing to do more teaching laying in a hammock that resides in a sewer than any teacher except, I guess, maybe Gojo has done at Jujutsu High. It's just and the even worst then, ever. Gojo's just like just half ass in it. I know, yeah. He's just such a unit, though. This lesson confused Junpei, though, since uh, he knows the sorcerers to be Mahito's enemies. And Itadori has been having an inner argument this whole time, but finally decides to ask Yoshino about the people who died at the theater the other day. He asked if he saw anything. And Junpei says no, and that he has just recently started seeing curses clearly. Itadori says, well, that was my only question, but could you still wait until my, I guess he's like my boss shows up? Well, don't call that guy your boss. <laughs> so disrespectful, pleasantly though. That guy should never be called a boss. No. A I sob, even, he should be the opposite of a boss. I feel like we even missed a scene where uh, when Nanami paired these two together for this task, he said, oh, and uh, Itadori, you'll be in charge. <laughs> that would have been awesome. 
Junpei agrees to wait, and so we get a little scene of just two bros talking about some films. I know, bro. They called it a film. Human Earthworm 3. Yeah, it turns out it's an old movie, which makes sense as to why that particular film looks so shitty. They uh, they didn't upgrade the technology at all. They used the same original copy that was made like 80 years ago. And I'd like to take this time to remind everyone that this means Junpei presumably skips school to pay 1,800 yen, also known as $16, to go watch an old film. And based on timestamps throughout the episode, it was like 9.30 a.m. Yeah, I still don't understand. This has got to be a cultural difference um, where people watch movies at 9.30 a.m. At Well, it's not a movie, it's a film, but they watch films at 9.30 a.m. at a film theater. It's pretty ridiculous. And hearing this news, oh my god, so anime, this makes Itadori turn into a piece of paper again as he says, that one was so boring. I get, I got hit so many times over that. Throwback to little snotty bear. An awesome guy. Junpei agrees that this film sucks, but says it's just a splatter film. So maybe it's our own fault for asking it to deliver more than that. What is a splatter film? I'm so glad you said that. Because my note says, hey, what the fuck is a splatter film? I googled it. Wow, good on you. It's a real thing. Never heard of it, though. I don't like it. I'll tell you that. Um, it's. I'm just not a fan of the phrase, first of all, splatter film. It's like, you say, yeah, dude, let's go see this movie. And I say, well, first of all, it's called a film. But what is it about anyway? You say, don't even fucking know, bro, but shit's about to splatter. I can tell you that. Splatter. Splatter. That's a word that you would use. It's actually a pretty cool word, now that you say it. It's just... uh... It's just like the gross horror movies, like the... That splatter things. The saws everywhere. and stuff. Okay, so bl- a lot of blood, a lot of yeah. organs. But I also I also don't like... I mean, Junpei is a bit of a film critic asshole, if you know what I mean. With the whole, maybe it's our fault for asking it to deliver more than that. No. No. A it's... good film should be a good film. You can have a film that's good in different yeah. ways. And if you're going at 9.30 a.m. to the film theater to watch a film, Mm -hmm. stop with this. You should expect a good film. Yeah, you should expect one. So they end up both agreeing that 2 was the better film, as we see Ghetto is uh, watching from afar. And just in case you thought this uh, battle between human earthworm sequels was just some throwaway conversation, they say fuck it. As we proceed to see a clip from Human Earthworm 2. Didn't think we'd be here. Yeah. So I have the synopsis here. You ready? Mm Mm-hmm. The second film was also in black and white because that's how technology works. We see a woman stabbing a bed with a, uh, a tank full of earthworms nearby. They don't appear to be human earthworms yet, but just your standard earthworm. But keep an eye on them. Okay. We cut to see her breathing hard as a dark figure watches from behind scary and said figure flips on the lights and surprise bet you guys didn't know that i starred in human earthworm too it's ronnie playing the part of the chubby son with some unfortunate facial deformities holding a wrench i still have that wrench they got you do still have that yeah they let me keep the prop how did they make your face like that um they just they gave me an entire honey bun, put it in my mouth, and they just said, leave it there. And I was like, all right. Junpei says he couldn't quite figure out what made it good, so he watched it three God. times. He watched that film three times. And how many times is that? That is three too many times. Thank you. He goes on to say it had the most effective gory scenes, too, so it wasn't easy to rewatch. And you know what I'd say to him? Well, yeah. It was a splatter film. What did you expect, Junpei? God, I, I'm not liking calling this guy Junpei. It's really grinding my gears. Itadori says he's been watching a lot of films, but not at the theater. And this well, blows young Junpei's mind as he says, But the emotional impact of finding a good one at the theater is huge, even if on demand is more convenient. That's what he sounds like. I, I'm pretty sure Itadori, or Itadori said, Movie? And I was like, well, you've been watching films. 
And yeah, I just automatically I'm it's yeah. so mad when people say movies, I correct it for them in my mind so I don't lash out at them too hard. Uh because keep in mind he was watching Lord of the Rings in one of the past episodes and that is a film if I've ever seen one. Yeah, if you call that one the M word, get out of here. Yeah. I mean, I think this uh this kid spends $150 minimum at the theater every single week is what it sounds like. Clearly, he has a crack whore of a mother that he is trying to keep his distance from. Now, this is actually really sweet. Itadori says, "I haven't been in forever. Take me with you next, or take me with you next time, will you?" As he hands Junpei his phone. That's pretty cute. Yep, and you can tell this means a lot to him. Clearly, he doesn't have a whole lot of friends, but you know what can always put a stop to a growing friendship? An experience with a great film. Mm-hmm. Crack whore mothers. We meet the mom. She instantly makes a dig about how she is surprised to see her son outside right in front of Itadori. Not very nice. Uh, that's the kind of thing that my dad would say, like offhanded comment my dad would say. You like, oh, you, is there, you hanging out with a girl? And I'll say. That's a first. No. Just going to record our podcast with Chad. Yes, every week. He calls me. He's like, "Hey, where you? What are you doing this weekend?" I just tell him, "Just going to hang out with a friend." He says, "It's a girl." I said, "No, it's Chad." You ever say it's Chaz? Sometimes. So yeah, the mom's smoking a cig. She's already flirting with Itadori. Be careful, yeah, crack whore. She, uh... This is a pedophile if I've ever seen one. I'm so glad you said that. I've got a note on that later. Poor Junpei is sad, which makes me sad, because he says that he had asked for his mom to quit smoking. And now this is weird. It cuts and it looks as if she is putting the cigarette back into the uh, the pack, as if she can come back to it later. Uh, you're pretty gross. Is this a thing? Can you do that? Do not. That is not a thing with cigarettes. If you do that... And I'm sure the delinquents we have listening to this podcast, I'm sure there's a few of them that do that. You are disgusting. And you I, know what? Turn off this podcast right now and stop listening to me. I don't. If you do that, get out of here. So that's what it is. It's something that the scum of the earth earth does. Yes. The, okay. I'll, it's something that a whore of a mother would do. Can you walk me through it? Like, why is it? I mean, when I saw it, I was like, well. Nah, like even, maybe that works. Even what? when other people are done with them, I've if you watch any film, any mm-hmm. decent film, right? May, maybe in movies they put they do shit like this, but they always throw it down, even if it's still you know got half of it left. Yeah, and they stomp on it. You never put it back in the package. What are you doing? I mean, the number of times I see people, you know, like start a sig, take two drags, and throw it out is crazy. So, yeah, I didn't know what that move was. But anyway, she says, oh yeah, I did promise not to smoke in front of you anymore, which for anyone not paying attention, I will, rem- I will remind you that was not my friend Junpei's request. He wanted her to just quit, quit smoking. in general. And she's already <sighs> twisting that up. What a C word. Mm-hmm. Eats Dory and Crack Whore do some of the weirdest flirting I've ever seen. Something about looking like a green onion. It's kind of weird. Didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah, she's all about this teenager, and it just reminds me of teachers in high school. They were all about me, all of them. Sad boy Junpei agrees with me because he says under his breath, What are you even talking about? She invites Yuji to dinner to the uh, whore of Junpei, and Crack Whore takes some attitude and asks if her cooking is such a nuisance. And this made me mad. Give me a break. This woman, cook, she's one grocery bag, one. Putting, yeah, a fro- putting a frozen dinner in the oven and sprinkling some green onion, which at this point, the way she has sexualized it with Itadori, might be intended for her vagina. I don't know. Sprinkling green onion over the top is not cooking. No way this woman knows her way around the kitchen. I know. What would it be even worse if she just got hammered during this yeah. dinner session? Surely stash? she won't take it that far. So Itadori's stomach rumbles in the most anime way ever as she asked him if she if he has any food allergies. I do. You know what I'm allergic to? What? This woman's bullshit. Thank you for asking, Chaz. We cut over to see Geto taking a look. My friend's mother's being like this was always my dream. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. 
just loosey goosey. Well, some of them. You know what I mean. Never happened though. Never happened, but you know, you never know, when like uh, you got a friend who's got a really hot mom. Like occasionally that happens. Yeah. I was always like, hey, maybe she'll grab some onions and get hammered with me on a Saturday I, night. I know. I've told you about. It. I've had one instance of where something like that happened. The onions or? Uh, well, the hot mom. Remember, I was laying on the couch and she uh, she came and like touched touched my thigh. Like she, I was on the couch. She came and sat on the couch, turned the TV on, touched my thigh, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" And then I totally banged her. <laughs> banged her with your foot, said, "Get off me." No, I didn't. I got super scared, just acted like I was still sleeping. Wow. I wonder, I wonder how she's doing. I wonder how she's aged. So we cut over to see Ghetto taking a look at the damage Nanami left behind. As holy shit, a sock puppet looking snake crawls out from under the debris and turns out it's Mahito. This guy's full of oh, surprises. And he just loves it. He loves that he was a sock puppet right here. So much infinitely cooler than Panda. Well, not we haven't seen much of Panda. When we see him, I guarantee you he's cooler than yeah, this when guy. When he turns into a sock puppet, call me up and let me know, okay? He won't have to because he'll sock puppet someone in the face. I'm pretty sure the two of them uh, talk about Nanami and the fight they had, but damn, Mahito is naked, so let's be honest. None yeah. of us know what they truly talked about. He he looks pretty good, too. He's got a nice bod. <laughs> there are the stitches all looks over. Looks like me. Well, there was something about uh, you're kind of like a built like a railroad, so. Well, he's a skinny lad, too, and I have stitches all over me for where my girl used to bite me everywhere. More shape, you remember that dump truck huh? that we saw? past episode damn oh yeah i've got one of those too so uh oh this was me trying to decipher their conversation there was something about like even if mahito is pulverized in bed with that body he won't die as long as he maintains the shape of his soul yeah that's i've always said that too i don't know if that's a direct quote but that's just what i had in my notes i didn't no that is he says as long as my soul is not completely you know when he was in a bed right yeah okay he's like as long as you know just freaky in the sheets what mm -hmm. is it freaky in the sheetsies what do you well, say um well my perfect woman is sweet in the streets freak in the sheets yes thank you okay for yeah it. unless you're a uh older woman and take me by surprise in the morning and i just don't have my wits about me <laughs> he's he you're shows like, don't what? move don't move i'm asleep <laughs> He shows off some of the different ways he can transform his body, which includes turning a finger into like a sharp dagger as he asks Ghetto to get him some clothes. And Ghetto correctly answers, no. Good answer. So this episode was going pretty well. Why, so why, why, do, you, why do you think uh, Ghetto says it like that? He does kind of say it a little seductively. Because, like I said, we're all thinking the same thing here. So, because I want to know why Ghetto... I think his ultimate goal Enjoying the view. is not necessarily like befriending these people and taking out Gojo or whatever. Whatever his goal is, I think like he's got a thing for these pe these curses, these oh, really? individuals. Hmm. I mean, did you not see him the way you looked at? Yeah, okay, Mahito but like there? I don't think that's you know looking at Brocano and looking at Mahito naked's two very different things. Like, yeah, but he's probably like, oh, I'll I'll blow Brocano's mind with what I can do because. Brocano actually blows stuff out of his head. Right. And he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that guy can... That guy can splatter from all sorts of different directions. That would, he would create an ultimate splatter film. So this episode was going pretty well, so why not ruin it with an assistant to the manager scene? He's sweating bullets just from hearing the news that Itadori is going to dinner. He says if anything odd happens to run away, which is literally the only advice I've heard this guy give over like the last 10 episodes. He said the same exact thing at the Juvie Center. Run away. What a teacher. Run away from me, baby. Wonder how many years of college he had to go to to figure that out. He hangs up and continues to think to himself that this is a huge blunder on his part as a supervisor. No shit. He thinks Gojo might not care, but fears the chewing out he will get from the adult of adults, Nanami. <laughs> Love, that's a good line. 
if he were to learn of assistance to the manager's incompetence, he would surely, you know, get a chewing out. He doesn't want to cry in front of people his own age. So the thought of that lights a uh, fire under his ass as he starts the car and screams, as you said, hurry up. You don't want to cry in front of others your age, do you? There is nothing more bitch in this world than saying that line. Oh my God. Nothing more bitch. I'll cry in front of whoever. I'm not scared. And I'm not going to cry in front of somebody because I'm a fucking terrible supervisor and don't know how to do my job. I'll tell you this. If I'm getting ready to cry, I'm not taking a... uh, uh, look at the room being like okay is there anyone my age here because as no. long as they're under 25 i'm okay and if they are my age come here brother give me a yeah. hug the number of times me and you have just you know dark roomed it yeah gotten close to each other watching been a great shoulder film. to cry on watched mm-hmm. a film and just let a few tears out it's God, healthy we, we cried so hard at marley and me well how could you not let the dog it's old and dies. The dog dies. It's fucking so. Owen Wilson put in a one hell of a performance. I believe Jennifer Aniston go starred in that film. I Is think it? it was Jennifer in that film. Love her work. Owen Wilson really knows how to do a good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That guy knows his ways around a film set. He never knows what that guy's going to get up to. <laughs> uh, moving on. What was I talking about? So just then, Nanami calls. We see him in a bathroom around a bloody sink. He's cleaning one of his wounds near. He's taking off these ridiculous goggles, and we see just how staggeringly handsome the man is. These goggles really do hide how handsome he is. I told you, dude. He's got a beautiful face. He's... And I mean that in the most non-sexual uh, way yeah. I could even say. I He's... just mean it in the same way I said it. Staggering. Yeah. Great facial features. Uh, taking wonderful aback. structure. Mm-hmm. He says he's going back to Jujutsu High to receive treatment. Nanami hangs up and thinks back to his fight with Mahito. He thinks that cursed spirit is a child. It probably hasn't been very long since he sprang into being, and he's greedily enjoying his own growth, which is With, super yeah. interesting. And he's pretty spot on if you have paid attention to the personality of Mahito. Yeah. Also, everyone is a child compared to Nanami because he's the adult of adult adults. Adult of adults. He goes on, The curse that Gojo fought, also known as uh, Brocano, has mastered his domain expansion. It won't be long before Mahito reaches that stage too. And that just gets me excited to know mm-hmm. what his domain expansion will be. Nanami decides they need to kill Mahito before it is too late, to which I can't help but wonder why he didn't try a little harder to do that after he cut his leg off. Because he was injured. Did you not just see him bleeding uh, in the sink? Who am I to question the adult of adults? You got the upper hand, just... Put a little effort, come on. Mahito's just better than him, dude. Remember, our boy Nanami, he is the adult of adults, but he never mastered a domain expansion. He's not the greatest of sorcerers. So we cut over to inside of a home, which is certainly paid for by any of Junpei's grandparents, who are so disappointed in the druggie of a mother, Well, we or, see some dinner taking place. Or it's paid for by her uh, sexual activity. Whoa, all right. I don't even think she has the work ethic to uh, put in those dicks. Hours. Sorry, I shouldn't have said dicks. Yeah, that's... You took it a little too far. Normally, it's me that takes it too far. This time, you took it too far. Let's not talk about how she just takes all of the dicks. You know, you gotta earn money somehow, ladies. It's fine if that's what you want to do. Guys, too, you know? If you got it, go for it. So Itadori is telling a story that uh, is just like barely funny, if even uh, at all. Yeah, I mean, he's just trying to be friendly. He's, yeah. It's one of those where you're trying to be funny, but it's not really working. But And Mom, who at this point is more alcoholed up than she inevitably was earlier, is laughing her fucking ass off. And this off. is when you know you, you got it in the bag. Itadori has got it in the bag. All yep. he's got to do is just make sure the that June, June pay. Mm-hmm. God, I hate saying that. 
goes to bed on time, yep. and I mean, he's it's on. All you got to do then is just land the thing. And poor Junpei is trying to nicely inform his mother that she is shit faced, but she ignores him as she hands Itadori a plate and says, "Do something funny with this." So My naturally, God. we see him holding the plate and the the onion, the green onion. It wasn't even used in the meal. Who's surprised? Not me. Well, it, it was used and she knew he was going to use it for other activities. Is what You were right the entire time. So Yuji is doing a reenactment of the famous Wilson scene from Castaway, a classic Tom Hanks film. And Drunky McGee doesn't understand the reference because she hasn't been sober enough to understand a film for who knows how long. And she's a lady that probably watches movies and not films. Mm-hmm. Junpei, on the other hand, who is an aspiring film critic, loved Yuji's portrayal. Yeah, this was cute right here. They give secondhand Smoke Sally a nice moment here where she is smiling seemingly from watching her son be joyful once again. I would argue that alcohol and prescription pills have just started mixing together. I don't think she actually Mm -hmm. cares about her child. So once again... Don't fall for this fake yeah. sweet moment. And it probably, the whole room reeks of a half-smoking cigarette right mm-hmm. now because it's in her fucking pocketbook. Because guess what? If she actually cared and this was a nice moment, she would actually attempt to quit smoking. I know it's very hard. You know, it's a very addictive substance, but you can try. How about this? Try a little bit. Not, oh, I told you I wouldn't smoke in front of you. That's what she sounded like. Yeah. I only uh, smoke when I drink, but I drink all the time, so. (laughs) We see a bunch of empty plates. Clearly enough food was not prepared. Honestly, she's probably lucky that I didn't get a look at the prepared meal, or I would have ripped her even harder. No way she knows how to cook. So Boozy Macbeth has passed out next to her four empty beer cans. Trust me, they weren't the only ones. Wow, at the kitchen table. Yeah, these are... Oh, you're right. Just Sorry. go ahead and yank that microphone down. I think I'm good. Yeah, these are just the cans at the table. Yeah, there's no telling what she's actually... She took some hidden shots. Yeah, she, how many I mean, times... she t- definitely took a bathroom break, smoked the other half of that cigarette like a maniac. Right. Because there's definitely, like... It wasn't like she went and grabbed four, be- four uh, beers at the start of the meal and brought them back. No, she kept getting up... Who yep. knows what she was doing in that kitchen? How much shit did not make it back to the table? Probably took a big old sniff of something, if you know it. Well, actually, no, she wouldn't be passed out right now. So we see a family portrait of the young family. A plant is covering up the face of the father who pulled the same move Chaz's dad did, which was getting the fuck out of this situation. And, you know, I don't like the mom, but I don't approve of the dad either. Your father shouldn't have left yeah. you, Chad, and um, neither should June Pace. So, well, I kind of, I kind of see why. Hey, I kind of see why it happened in both situations. But I love you. Thank you. Your dad doesn't deserve you. Well, it's not. It, it's it's okay. not even just me. I kind of understand okay. when you when you're married to. Yeah, but but don't justify it huh? that way. Don't justify it that way. You deserve better. I wouldn't want to spend the rest of my life with my mom. Don't either. justify it. He could still be in your life without having to associate with her. She's really not that bad of a woman. Stop saying that about her. Stop taking it out on her. She eats grass. We see a flashback of slutty McFarlane dragging on another sig, telling her child that he doesn't have to go to school. Oh, and, this is a great parent. And then rambling on about aquariums and oceans and fish and blah, 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 blah. I'm just mad Itadori didn't get inside that. Yeah, I wouldn't have touched that thing with a 10-foot pole. I mean, she's an attractive lady. Ugh. She may be a C-word, Ugh. a C-U-N-T, but I would get all in that C-U-N-T. Well, if you want to call her attractive, you go for it. Those are my type of ladies. Gross. I'll get down with the ladies. You know, I didn't really get uh, spoiled on the happenings of this episode, but I did see in the Discord some people mentioning uh, Junpei's mom, and I thought it was going to be like a sad thing. They didn't tell me that this was the worst character that we've seen on the show so far. Wow, so sad. Crack whore mother. Passes away. (laughs) So you know this kid's life has been a travesty because he comes out of this flashback like that was a pleasant memory. He's like, oh yeah, 
good times. My mom told me, you know. Didn't have to go to school. You don't have to go to school. Go watch a film at 9.30 a.m. at a film theater. Here's half the money I made last night. That's how much it's going to cost to get into the 9.30 showing of Human Earthworm 3. I've got just enough to buy a 12-pack of beer and a green onion. So he asked Yuji what his mom was like, and he says he never met her and only has a few faint memories of his father, but his grandpa was there for him. And Itadori gets a call from assistant to the manager. After he hangs up, Junpei confirms that Yuji is a jujitsu sor- jujutsu sorcerer. God, what a stupid... God. He says yes... And, hey, uh, uh, excuse me, Roddy and Chad. It's actually pronounced Jujutsu Sorcerers. It's not Jujitsu. God, these guys don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's just hard to say. It is know? so hard to say. I, I feel like I hiccup in the God, middle of God, sorry we don't have 45 minutes of, of is it our ju- day, each day of it, the week, to practice is it in the mirror. Jujutsu? I think it's Jujutsu? That. No, it's what the first one you just said. That one's the harder one, though. I know. That's what I said, dude. They pra- the people that tell us what it is, they have to practice it 45 minutes each day just to say it right. Uh, you'd be nice, you know? No, I'm not going to be nice. <laughs> just ex- My tongue is not that developed, okay? I don't have that talent to do so. We just trust me. We haven't got to use it all. I've lot. heard it a million times. I have terrible talents with my tongue. Yeah. Other than talking, where else would we use a tongue? It's just, I haven't got a whole lot yeah. of chances. You've used it on other things. They say, stop. <laughs> you suck at it. Which makes for really awkward, awkward times. They're like, just use your teeth. I'm like, what? Yeah, they're like, that's Anything's not, they're like, they say, yes, that's not how you eat an ice cream cone. Yeah. Whatever. I say, thank you, ma'am. So... Give uh, Junpei an inch, he'll take a mile. He asks, have you ever killed someone? Um, there's a red flag. Itadori says no. Junpei says, but someday you'll have to fight bad sorcerers, right? What will you do then? Kill Itadori em. says, I still wouldn't want to kill them. Junpei says, why not? They're bad people. Second red flag. Yeah, this guy's a little worrisome. But it- it's understandable because have you seen his mother? Seriously. Itadori says, because I feel like if I kill someone, the option of killing will enter its way into my life. This is basically quote of the week stuff right here. Hold on to your britches. The value of life would become diminished. I wouldn't even understand the importance of those I care about anymore. And that scares me. Oof. Oh, really? That's your take? That beautiful, that beautiful. Did you like that? Oof. That's you know what that is. That's me thinking about that quote late at night with the wind blowing. The wind moon. blowing. Late at night, wind blowing, moon, a full lit moon, and whew, you hear that noise, and you're just thinking of that quote. No, that's you blowing out. Bullshit. Marijuana. <laughs> Later that night, lying in bed, Junpei thinks to himself, "People don't have hearts." Okay. That idea saved me. It gave me strength, but if killing someone would mean tainting my soul, then I can't kill anyone. Good. Okay, he's learning. Whoa, this guy's learning. That was deep. He, yep. He's going to end up being really good. So we cut over. Pop them pills. Paula wakes up from the dinner table. We see at least two more beer cans on the coffee table. Her first thought is, did Yuji go home already? Oh, she <sighs> blew it. You already said it. But this is where I said, because in case you didn't catch up on the vibes that was going on, this woman is a pediophile. She is, and Itadori blew it. You cannot let a lady get that hammered. You got to give her a white substance, keep her up, you know, make sure she's conscious, she knows what she's doing. Uh, No, hey, no one listen to this. This is not sponsored by the Podcast Chronicles. It's just terrible. Don't, Don't say that. Well, uh, he Moving blew. On. Screw the pooch. Women pedophiles exist too. Don't let them be forgotten. Yes. She has the thought, gosh, it's this late. I need to clean up. Which is going to do about the same amount of good as me thinking, gosh, I've already eaten half this pizza. I should not eat this second half. Spoiler alert. I always eat the second half, 
she never cleans up. Just then, she picks up a phalange that has been sitting on the table as Where did this thing come from? Just phalange its way over there. I mean, how do I do... First of all, it's a gross phalange. Do you notice that? It's got like a big knob on the end of it or something. Like, we got some hand on this thing, too. It's a little cancerous phalange. And uh, just as, oh, wow, literally don't know how to describe this thing, but I'll try... A green monster with big lips, some Harley Quinn hair, and maybe 16 boobs. I don't know for sure that that's what they are, but these lumps Looks are like in the same vicinity that you would look if you were on the search for some boobs. And also it appears this was the part that really got me. It has like six human arms sprouting from God knows what below it. Could you figure that out? Did you even no. watch this episode? I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know the boob, the whole boob thing. I am always in search for boobs. I usually, when I bring somebody home from a bar, mm-hmm. I go and search for boobs, and I realize, wow, these they don't have boobs. Is this a guy? These are and, some pretty strong pectoral muscles. And, yeah, and then you yeah. go, oh, and then you kind of look up and you go, oh, hey, Frank. So we go to the calling card, and afterwards we see a t- <laughs> afterwards we see a timestamp that says after the incident. I'm not even going to attempt the high school, which I'm assuming is referring to the theater event. It's like after the incident at such and such high school. Is that what you thought it was? I guess. Some of these well, like... You kind of scurved or, or, uh, swerved out of the way of the answer earlier. Did you watch this episode? As I was saying, yeah, some of these like things are kind of confusing. Okay. Find where I'm at here. The, narr- the narrator says... We discover the corpse of Deep Sleep Sally, mother of Junpei, at their home, along with an unsealed Sukuna's finger. His, it belonged to the second left arm's pinky finger. I like how they were able to, to determine that it was the second left arm. Yeah. Wow, what an unimportant phalange. You're like, well, it's either the first or... I think this is the second arm. It goes on. We believe the mom of the year was attacked by cursed spirits drow- drawn to Sukuna's finger. Her remains were missing, everything from the waist down. Oh. Good call by the cursed spirit. If they had consumed that woman from the waist up, they probably would have had, uh, they would have been dead too with the contents of her stomach. And why do you think it ate her legs? I don't know. There were no visible or detectable traces of blood found on site, and the body was lying down in her bedroom. Lifting up the blanket revealed only cold packs and ice bags spread out <laughs> beneath it. Oh. This, this bitch got half her body eaten and was so, so wasted she tried to put some ice on it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I took it. Was it her or was it Junpei that did it? I mean, it <laughs> might either way, it's so bad. Like either way, that's the dumbest shit I've that's ever seen. That's true. It probably was Junpei because if you had half your body eaten, I don't think you're making it to the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> but, Good point. So, but still, I like to think it was her idea. And she, Junpei, poor Junpei. I mean, terrible that his mother died in the middle of the night. But he's like, oh, I, we gotta, we gotta put some ice on this. Uh, oh. Spoiler alert! It didn't work. What a whore. Junpei goes to an actual high school, so anytime he goes to the, like, the only child care he knows, the only medical care, is when he goes to the nurse at the school, and they're like, the put only thing school on nurses can do is check for ticks and put ice on things, so that's his only medical knowledge. But yeah, let's. this is a serious moment. R.I.P. You know what? Should we give a moment of silence to no, this lady? we should give a moment of silence to this lady. <laughs> if anything, we give a moment of silence to the... Sad tale that is okay, June Ronnie, Pei's let's, life. Uh, I feel bad for the kid, but no, Ronnie, you have this weird thing where mm-hmm. any yeah. lady that yeah. passes away, right? You don't care, and you if you want to date someone in the future, you got to start caring. Give me about one more like, example. I think you're just making this up on the spot. I'm not. All right, I'm waiting. Sasha, you. <laughs> You thought it was hilarious uh, the way she died, well, the yeah, what she uh, said. That's because just... Chad, her last word was meat. <laughs> it, it does not matter, Ronnie. <laughs> if you can't find, listen, if you live in a world where you can't find the humor in someone's last word being meat 
or someone putting an ice, putting a bunch of ice. But first of all, why would you have that many ice packs? Here's the thing. There could have been a lot of funnier things, though. She could have said pudding. That would have been a funnier last word. Um, instead of ice packs, he could have put, you know, I don't know. I think, dice. He I could have rolled a, some dice. I think from a humor standpoint, they were both done perfectly. <laughs> well, you need to care a little bit more if you ever want a future wife. Trust me, as a guy that's had multiple people leave him and cheat on him and definitely hasn't had as much sex as he said he's had. <laughs> We get to a scene where it seems as if, uh, I don't think that's true. Didn't you get um, 11 pieces of rice on that one test that was in the Discord? Eleven. Oh, yeah. I got 11 pieces of rice. Didn't 11, fill me up at all. 11 grains of rice. Yeah. I, you know what? That's a bullshit test. We're going to have to do a thing where we take the test with the people because I think that it was bullshit. So we cut to a scene where it seems as if Itadori has learned that Nanami essentially sidelined him for the fight. This greatly frustrates him. Nanami has filled Yuji in on Mahito's uh, using transfigured people to his advantage. He says, There are some people who are beyond saving. If you continue this work, there will come a time when you're forced to kill a person yourself. But this is not that time. Each story looks a little nervous. Nanami continues, Understand this. Being a child hey, is not hey, a hey. sin. Chaz is QOD Ooh, right oh, there. Oh, oh, here Being we go. a child is not a sin. The adult of all adults says this, and it's just beautifully worded. And he's the adult of all adults. That's a good quote of the week. Good work by you. You actually did watch this episode. Good I did. You. It's a great quote of the day. He then says, I would like you to continue monitoring Junpei. And that's exactly who we cut to. He says he didn't own any black, which seems unlikely for a kid this punk, but alas, he didn't. So he opened his mom's closet and put on the first thing that caught his eye. He makes his way to school. <laughs> Imagine wearing your dead mother's clothes, black clothes. You ever uh, wore anything of your mom's? On accident, yeah. I accidentally wore her jeans one time to school. <laughs> 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 they had sparkles on the back of them. That's how people found out. But you've got some that have sparkles, right? I mean, I do, but I'm saying those had them, too. Don't they have, like, uh, aren't they bejeweled down the legs and it just says country boy? Yeah, I usually wear that with my camo, pink camo shirt. Big belt buckle? Yep. That says hog wild. So... He makes his way to school. We see a flashback of him sitting on the bed with Mahito, who is showing him Sukuna's finger. Poor Junpei looks horrified and asks how a thing like that got into his home. Mahito says, There are many curse users who earn money by cursing people. It was probably done by one of them. With money and connections, it's easy to curse someone to death. Can you think of anyone? Anyone who might hold a grudge against you or your mother? Or perhaps someone... Dark and gloomy with plenty of money and free time. God, what an evil Knievel this guy is. We then see Junpei outside of some sort of school assembly. A young man is uh, accepting an award. Turns out his friend with a purple afro set this whole thing up, but apparently didn't do it right because our award winner is threatening purple afro with his life, which seems a bit excessive. Yeah, this guy's a douche, paying his way to get all these awards and stuff with his buddies and... I don't like this guy. So the award winner, his name is Shouta. Stupid. And he's the, Shouta the ha. And he's the big man of he's the big man on campus. A lot of people are taken uh, aback with him. And we see a black portal emerge outside. This is Mahito's doing, who is saying, Emerge from darkness. Blacker than darkness. <laughs> Wait, right? Is that it? Yeah. Emerge from darker, blacker than darkness. Wait. <laughs> Emerge from darkness, blacker than darkness. Purify that which is impure. Which, Chad, I saw... Oh, wait, I already did that joke, but I had it here, too. I yeah, said you I, already did that one. I saw your results from the rice test. And they it's, were, it's kind of fucked up, dude. I'm telling that. you, it's a bullshit test. Because you're impure. I was going to double dip on that joke, but I got ahead of it's myself. It's not very funny. It's a bullshit test. You're gross. A veil of darkness spreads across the sky, putting the school in a bubble of sorts. 
Ghetto, who is also here, says thanks because he can't afford to leave any residuals of himself behind. Huh? You know what that means? I bet he's left a lot of residuals behind inside of Mahito. Mahito says the veil effects cause them to not be able to escape from inside. Some can enter from outside, but only those with weak cursed energy. It's an unannounced veil in a residential area. Ghetto says the windows will report it right away. I do not know what they're talking about here. Yeah, I don't either. And his name's Ghetto. It's pretty ghetto of him. He goes on, I hope this plays out as you believe it will. Mahito says, I believe it will. The general course was already set once Junpei landed Tsukuna's vessel. I'll cause the two of them to clash and force Itadori into a pact giving Tsukuna dominance. So, what does this mean, Chaz? As I feel your attention wandering away. This means that once Junpei and Itadori clash, he'll make it to where Itadori's got to no, basically... No, about the, about the finger, about the finger. About the finger? Yeah. Oh, it was set up by Mahito and dun, dun, dun. Ghetto. <laughs> but yeah, but basically their whole goal is to force Sukuna and Itadori into a strange pact to where Sukuna has way more control over Itadori's body, but as we know, a pact has already been made. Mahito said, asked if Ghetto was okay with this since the finger was a precious resource. Ghetto says it's fine. He's hoping to have Jujutsu High retrieve the one they placed at Junpai's home. <laughs> Junpai? Junpei's home. So these guys are behind all this wildness. Geto leaves, and Mahito says he's going to miss all the fun watching foolish kids die. That's my guy. Yeah. Wow. You, <laughs> you stands of Mahito. I'm not worried about y'all at all. Cut inside to a bunch of dead-looking kids. Sweaty teacher from last episode is the only one up and about. He's freaking out, telling kids to get a grip. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is just as bad as the assistant to the manager. Clearly, he's prepared for something like this. Just then, Junpei walks up and says, they're not dead. He lifts up his punk bangs to reveal some sort of warts as he says, make sure you're watching. You know it's not like me to speak ill of the dead, but these might be scars from where that floozy of a mother put her cigarettes out on, on a very specific side of her son's forehead. Well, if you remember from a couple episodes ago, the uh, when he was getting beat up by bullies, they were putting stuff out on him. That's true, but I think this was from the mom. No, I don't I don't think it's from the mom. Sweaty Pig is stumbling around some words. Because remember, she puts her out. half-smoking cigarettes back into her pocketbook. That's true. <laughs> As Junpei walks over to Shouda and says, I have a question for you. Are you the one who left that in my home? Jumping to conclusions. And before he can even answer, he starts getting a purple rash all over his body. This guy deserves it. Changed my mind. Junpei punches him to the ground and kicks him as he says that he's going to die no matter what his answer is. So I guess Chad yeah. will be thrilled. Oh, yeah. Because he doesn't Junpei have a technique is on my list. to see through his lies. And he's already done enough to earn it. Yes, he has. Like, Kill you, him. Kill him all. What, what, what did he do? Beat the shit out of him for having a stupid book club. Yeah, the book club's stupid, but... Film club. Shada says he is so sorry as Itadori busts into the room and yells at Junpei, who stays out of the, who says, stay out of this. And then, let's do a very creepy, because this is pretty scary right now. Okay. Let's do a creepy version. Lost in paradise. There was no Juju Stroll. It was just a uh, was next not. time on. How about Dang, that? Dang, that sucks. I really like those. D don't make that face. Huh? Don't make that face. Really like them. They're awesome. Yeah, you should Great. like them because they're very anime. So the fact that you're showing that face. I'm glad they have a lot to do with the show. Is a point for Ronnie. Love how canon they are. They are canon. Um. So what you think? I like it. I'm I'm ready for the next one. This got me hyped. You uh you need to update the people on your watching this show. Nope. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Because I feel like you really suck at this podcast now, and it's because you're not spoiling things. So go ahead and uh, tell them what you did. I finished the show the other day. <laughs> Me and my dumbass roommate Kyle, he's God, that guy's such a dumbass. We were watching it and he's like, dude, do you want to just finish this? 
And I was like, yeah, uh, just get your hand off my thigh and click resume. So we resumed it, started watching, and we went through about seven or, or I was on... I don't know. We finished it, though. And how do you feel like that's uh, helped your performance in the podcast? I feel like it's helped it tremendously. Really? I feel like today was one of my best ones ever. Mm -hmm. But I know what's going on now. How much do you think you talked in this one? I thought I talked a good bit. Did you? Yeah. I don't know. You know, I'm just always so... i had worse. I'm always so in the mood. You've definitely had worse, I'll tell. I definitely talked more than you did last episode. I will. That's just not true. You were god-awful last one. just so not true. God, that's not true at all. When Brock was about to be here, I felt like I was talking to myself. I felt like you weren't even across from me. It's just, oh, you mean when you said, oh my God, we got to finish this up quick. Nope. So just, but guess what? Did you edit it? Did you edit it? Do you even know? No, you don't. No. I had so you know, many that great sucks, man. The amount of feedback I got saying like, wow, this was the worst episode you guys have done yet. But Ronnie had a lot of good uh, takes to add. You know, it's crazy. My I have these in-depth intellectual talks that mm-hmm. somehow just get edited out most of the time. Oh, really? You think? Yeah. Yeah, that I happens? might have to start posting them separately. Yeah, I think you should. I think you should start taking extra time. I think, because that's something you'll do. Yeah, You'll I take will, extra will. time to focus, get your words together for an in-depth intellectual talk, as you say, and post them elsewhere. That's something you'll totally do. No, I'm very... Look at me. I'm shaking in my boots. Chaz, that's you know happen. what I'll call it? Chaz's intellectual enchantments of the day. Oh, wow. Still going back to that enchantment segment that's literally happened one and a half times. We've got a question from uh, another name I don't know how to say. Rublock, Rublock, Rublock. He says, hey, Chad and Ronnie. Don't like how you put your What's name up? first. I don't like how you put your name first. I started listening to you guys a while back ago. And uh, I love your guys' dynamic. Thanks, man. Thanks, brother. I got a question. Uh, what is something you would suggest to have slash prepare for in a podcast? I bought a mic and want to start my own. Well, perfect you ask me and mm-hmm. not Ronnie. I prepare probably the most out of any podcaster that's ever existed. I would say you just need to get your mind right. Drink some coffee beforehand. Um, have a Celsius on you do some meditating. I usually meditate about 15 to 20 minutes right before this podcast session. I become one with myself and then I I intertwine my thoughts and my reasoning with my speaking and emotions and that's how we uh we do this podcast. Ronnie, do you have anything? Well, oh, what? Huh? Good god. What did you even just say? Um no, just look for a podcast hosting site. You know, there, uh, there's a bunch of different ones, and then you download a uh, recording thing, such as Audacity is what we use, and you hit record. You buy yourself a mic, but yeah. start off with a $20 one, and then as soon as you get mm-hmm. about two to five listeners, you buy the $1,000 exactly. mic. Exactly. That's exactly what we did. You uh, were just two assholes that bought microphones off Amazon. And, you know, it takes, you'll hit some bumps in the road. Some will sound like horrible, but maybe someone will listen. And then before you know, you'll just grow to such a staggering rate that you'll have like 200 people on all uh, social media platforms. And you so are like, you talk with like 15 of them because the rest of them yeah. just kind of join and then left. But Well, and then if you're like me, you get thousands mm-hmm. and by thousands, I mean hundreds by hundreds. I mean, you know, tens by tens of you DMs. Mean, by tens you mean every bin. day. Every day I get so many DMs. Yeah. Y'all can lay off. Please someone DM me. Y'all can lay off talking to me so much. It's all good. But no, I suggest you do it. You know, everyone's like, oh, there's too many podcasts. Who cares? You know, talk yeah. about talk about what you want to talk about. Have fun. It's a hobby. We Believe totally, it. We totally don't need any money from this. We don't. Yeah, me. we don't talk about it a lot because it's just not a big deal. Um, we haven't actually made any money. We don't like bringing that up because you know it's not the point. Uh, we're just doing it for fun, and fun is what we're having. Anything else? No, that's. I think you hit it right on the head. I will say this real quick since. Um, we're only doing one episode today. I was going to save it for next episode. But considering you just came with absolutely nothing as far as wedding weekend. stories. Oh, my God. 
Here we all were excited, like, oh, wow, Chad's going to another wedding. There's no telling what kind of crazy shenanigans he's going to get up to. And then he's going to come back and be like, oh, well, yes, uh, it turns out it takes all weekend. You get dressed, you take some pictures, you eat some food, um, and then you have, like, a good time because there's, like, open bars, and so you just drink something. And that's basically all that happened. And also, <laughs> I got my um, uh, dick slapped by a couple guys because the girls didn't want to talk to me. Well, if if any of the seven girls that I attempted to get with would have actually said yes, I would have had a great story. But no good story. So people have been wanting a Pistachio Man update. Do yes. you have a story? Uh, let me think back. Let me think back. Let me think back. While you're thinking back, this isn't so much a story, but just this guy's way of life that I find funny. Well, I was going to the break room the other day, and we have circular round tables the round tables tend to be circular which is why i specified that part and he you can usually fit five to six people at these tables he had a table all to himself with just shit spread everywhere so i went filled up my water bottle came back and i saw where he had an entire an entire rotisserie chicken about Eight other plastic bags strewn all over the place. He had another plate that he was currently eating off of. And the weirdest part that I saw, he had an entire bushel. Like, and when I say bushel, I mean he had a bushel of herbs that you would have needed two hands to pick up all of them. (laughs) And as I walked by, he grabbed it, tore some off, like a big handful off, to the point where it sounds like if you were, I don't know, like picking weeds like yeah. just where you hear like 800 things shred and then he just threw that on his plate and kept going to town god this guy he rips and i'll tell just a little this is kind of his lifestyle too in the mornings okay when you get there if i show up about 7 a.m i go to the bathroom sometimes you know right when i get there i've got a small bladder i walk in and i'm going to take a piss and i just hear and this man is blaring he's in the showers in the bathroom he is just blaring yeah dance music as loud as possible at 7 a.m. he literally has a boombox we're yes, not kidding. He, and it's he brings the, the boombox the largest boombox i've ever seen in my life it'll shake the entire building and you're right he just plays nondescript like dance music that I don't even know is from like any actual artist. I think it's being made only by computers. Yeah, you. it won't be copyrighted. You yeah. could use it on anything without being copyrighted. We could put this music on our podcast because every single one just has the same standard and then in the background be like some woman just and, and I've always wanted to imagine like i imagine what he's doing in there every time and i just imagine that he's just shaking his ass to nothing shaking his ass and just like bobbing up like fist yeah. bumping while in his shower and it's just like 7 a.m yeah he's used one hand to like clean himself off because he doesn't you know he lives in the parking lot so he's got to get a shower here so he's using one to bathe himself with and then the other one is just non-stop fist bumping <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's it's so ridiculous Oh, and also you guys knew this, but he's the most tan person you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> so tan. Oh, my God. Uh, all right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Pistachio Man. He also has been cu- uh, tying his sweatshirt around his neck now. Um, alive and he, well. He tried to take my sweatshirt swag around the waist. It's around his neck now, so I don't associate with that guy. I just wanted to clear that up that's, with everyone. Mm, I don't think that's true. I've been Ronnie. I've been Chatley. Pistachio Man is alive and well. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. Peace.